Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's Liz from West Star Tarot. And today I thought I would um, go through uh, decks I'm bringing on vacation. So I know a lot of times um, we have VRs or tags that um, talk about, oh, you know, if you're going on vacation and you can only bring X amount of decks, what, how many or which ones would you bring? So this is actually um, a real response to that because I'm actually on vacation and these are the decks I brought. So I had the good fortune or intelligence to marry someone whose uh, family is from Barbados. So right now that's where I am uh, in Barbados, um, staying at my brother-in-law's house. He and um, my sister-in-law very kindly opened up their home to us. So here we are for two weeks. And the last time I came down here was four years ago. Um, and at that time, I think I brought 15 decks with me and a number of books. And my um, suitcase was overweight. I had to take some decks out and put it in my carry-on. And then my carry-on weighed a ridiculous amount of weight. So this time I decided, you know, I'm going to be really um, smart or pragmatic or um, realize that I'm only going to be gone two weeks uh, and how many decks do I really need and will I really use? So um, anyway, I did, um, I spent um, about two weeks before we left every night as I was falling asleep. I went through decks in my head to think about um, what decks do I want to bring with me? And I had just mountains of ideas about it. And then um, I didn't make any decisions. And the morning that we were leaving, um, I just had to kind of say, okay, what are you bringing? So I'm going to show you those. But first I thought I'd just um, talk a little bit about being in Barbados and staying in a residential neighborhood um, versus staying in a tourist area. And it really is very different. So um, we're staying in Bridgetown, which is the capital city. It's really a city in Barbados and um, it's pretty active around here. The neighbors all act, interact with each other and are really friendly. Um, and um, everyone speaks when you're walking down the street or driving down the street. Um, the refrain, in, instead of hello, they say, all right, um, and wave. Uh, diagonally across the street from us is a, uh, a little, um, what they call a rum shop. So folks in neighborhoods um, oftentimes um, open up a little their front room or they build a little side shed or shack or something um, and have a bar um, and they play music and sell beers and drinks and so forth so uh, we went over there a couple nights ago to the local it's called sexy's bar and we hung out with sexy the bar owner and um, a couple of her other customers and we uh, chatted about politics. Um, here in Barbados, Mia Motley is the prime minister, so they have a woman prime minister. So I've been asking um, everyone that I kind of interact with, so what do you think of the prime minister? Because I'm just kind of uh, interested. I love the fact that there's a woman prime minister. So um, when we arrived, today is Sunday, the 17th of April. We got here on Tuesday, the 12th of April. And when we arrived, um, you know, we picked up our rental car and drove over here. And um, so Maria, my sister-in-law, uh, after we were here for a while said, oh, I'm really sorry to tell you, but um, the water's off. And we were like, oh, okay, what's up? So apparently what's up is that um, it's not, it wasn't off around the whole island. It was just off in St. Michael's and uh, Christchurch, which are the two um, parishes where um, Bridgetown is. So um, apparently what happened was um, they had to shut down the pumping station that pumps water to Bridgetown and um, Christchurch. Bridgetown is in St. Michael's Parish. 
And um, the, what happened was um, this pump, which is humongous and is rather old, um, was built on a wooden platform years and years, decades ago. And, you know, water and wood, over time, the wood was starting to rot. Um, and it got to the point where um, if they didn't do something about rebuilding a new platform, the pump was going to fall through the platform. So, um, you know, they let it get to crisis point instead of, you know, I, I said to my sister-in-law, how come no one noticed this? Like, I don't know, a while ago. And she said, that's the question that everyone's asking. So anyway, um, the water was off. And every night, um, a water truck would come by and we would bring buckets and jugs out to the water truck and bring them into the house. Um, so yeah, flush the toilet. I was kind of rinsing off with a, you know, bottle of water. <laughs> it was, you know, it was kind of like camping. We were washing dishes and it was, it was just interesting. And, you know, I thought about how much I take for granted, um, like water. Um, and even maybe how wasteful I am of water, because when you don't have running water and you have to carry jugs of water in, you use it really sparingly and you're really um, careful about it. And, you know, you realize that you don't really need to wash your hair every day, that the world won't come to an end if you skip a few days. Um, and we were going to the beach and, you know, taking a sea bath. Um, finally, on Friday, um, uh, I said to Bob, my husband, I got to take a shower. <laughs> so we drove around the island um, up to um, another parish, uh, a town called Oyston's where they have a public beach, um, interestingly called Miami Beach. So um, they had water, running water, and there were public showers at the beach. So I, I had my shampoo and everything, and I just showered uh, at the public showers. And, ooh, yeah, I felt a lot better after that. And then we got up Saturday morning, and the water was back on. So we're back in business. Um, but I am trying to be really careful, um, because we are on an island, and although we're surrounded by water, it's salt water. Um, so, um, you know, we have to be uh, careful about um, the water we use. So that's just a little side chat about uh, being in Barbados. Um, I love it here. Uh, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Um, I love the food. Um, I love the people. I love the beaches. Um, I love the climate. Um, it's just a special, magical place. And um, I feel like it's um, like a, a spiritual home for me. Um, when, I, when I come back here, I, I feel like my spirit is at home. Um, I, I don't know what more to say, but anyway, it's a special place. Um, so anyway, now the whole point of this video was to talk about decks. So. One of the things that um, guided my decision-making about what decks to bring um, was the fact that I decided to bring this book. Um, can you see it? Understanding uh, Tarot Court. It's by Mary Kay Greer and Tom Little. And let's see, it was published by Llewellyn in I think 2007. Let's see here. Uh, 2000, oh, 2012, no, 2004, I'm sorry, 2004. I got this book in 2016, and um, I started it, but in true Aries fashion, I didn't finish it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring this one tarot book with me, so that I can't go to the next one and the next one and the next one. So that guided my decision about what decks to bring. So let me talk a little bit about tarot first. So um, I did bring um, 
the guy in tarot. Um, I did a deep dive um, the end of uh, 2022 with the guy in tarot. So when I was thinking about studying the courts, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to go with the, the um, guy because I've already done a deep dive with it. And, but I really want to study the courts even in more depth. So one of the exercises at the beginning of this book is to talk about finding yourself in the courts. And you put the, arrange the 16 court cards by suit um, in row and by uh, rank in columns. So you have all the pages, all the knights and so forth and all the swords and all the wands and so forth that way. Um, in the Gaian tarot, the, um, the uh, courts are not called page, knight, queen, king. They're called child, explorer, guardian, elder. So it's more by age and experience than by rank. So you go through, you put the 16 court cards out um, and you look at them, then you put them in a pile and you go through and you turn over two and you pick the one um, that you like the most or that speaks to you the most out of the two and so forth and so on until you get a pile of a, of a few cards of, your, of the ones that you feel speak to you or you see yourself in the most and then you whittle it down. So the two that I whittled it down to were the guardian of air and the guardian of water. So queen of air, uh, queen of swords and queen of cups. Now my card for the year this year is um, the queen of cups. So um, I thought, okay, does that make me wanna go more with the queen of cups or more with the queen of swords? So I'm still debating and I may just keep both. I'm not sure. But um, here's some of the court cards from the guy in. You can see, oh, these are all the children. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorites. So anyway, um, oh, okay. Elder of Water, I love that card. So anyway, those are the guy in courts. I'm gonna be using those to study with. And then um, literally at the last moment before I left, I threw this deck in. I just thought, you know, I've really never studied uh, Tarot de Marseille. Um, this is one of, I just got this one like a couple days before we left. And I thought it's a pocket deck, it's little, it's, you know, costs like 18 bucks. So I just threw it in my suitcase and I thought, if it gets lost, it's it's not a big deal. Like my guy and I put in my carry-on, but this one, it's like, okay. So I brought this one and I thought I'm gonna study the courts in this one as well. Uh, so I have these uh, in order. This is the suit of swords. Now, one of the things I noticed about these court cards is there's really not much differentiation um, between them. First of all, they're all blonde, <laughs> which I, when I get home, I'm coloring, coloring some of them in. So I thought, you know, with these cards, um, you know, you are gonna rely on the image in terms of um, directionality, who they're, when you do a spread, who the court card's gaze uh, touches or looks at, what direction they're facing in, are they looking at each other, are they, do they have their backs to each other, and so forth. But really, with the um, Tarot de Massé, um, it's more about your knowledge of what each rank means. So what what does a valet, what does a, oh, well, I'll say it in English, what does a page, what does a val, uh, sorry, a knight, what does a queen, what does a king, what do they stand for, and what do each one of the suits represent, and also their um, corresponding uh, element. So you have to kind of depend, I think, more on your um, knowledge of tarot um, than with something like the Gaian, because with the Gaian, you can look at this image and just sort of think, okay, it's an elder, so I'm going to think um, wisdom, um, 
knowledge, life experience. Um, you can see that the water is very calm behind him. So I would think this person is a calm um, uh, in terms of, you know, not a fly off the handle when it comes to emotions. Um, I would probably look at the colors um, and so forth. So I might not need as much, I, I, I wouldn't need as much actual tarot knowledge. Um, with this card uh, than I, that I would with the um, Tarot de Marseille. So those are two of the tarot decks. And then I also brought, I wanted to bring a Rider Waite Smith. So um, I brought a deck that I've modified. This is the little pouch that I keep it in. And it's the Albano Wait. Uh, uh, Albano Rider Waite Smith, I'll call it. Um, and what I did was I got a um, two inch uh, hole punch and I made uh, the Albano Waite Smith into a round deck. It's little, you can see, um, well, I don't have, yeah, oops, yeah, it's little, um, but it's very portable. And one of the fun things about squaring a deck or rounding a deck is, um, you have to uh, think to yourself, okay, you can't have the whole image. So what part do you want to keep in? A, so you'll recognize the card, and B, so that you get the, the meaning of the card. What meaning of the card do you want to get? So here's the emperor. I'm starting with him because uh, it's Aries season. I'm going to put these this way. Oh. This card I included, the Three of Cups, because it is my um, card for the month of April. So I have the Queen of Cups for my year card and the Three of Cups for April. And I'm gonna do a video, um, probably when I get home, about the Three of Cups. Here we see the Six of Swords and um, the Star card, High Priestess, Death, Knight of Cups, Empress, Nine of Pentacles. So here's a good example of what do we leave in here? Because I couldn't leave the imagery in and the Eight Cups. But of course, when you know the deck well enough, I, I know this is the Eight of Cups. I don't need to see the Eight Cups. Queen of Cups. Two of Cups. So that's my Rider Waite Smith deck. So those are my tarot decks. And then, um, of course, I never leave home without this, the living wheel. You can see how beat up the deck is because before the pandemic, I was traveling about once a month, sometimes twice a month for work. And I always would bring this deck with me. Um, so that when I got to my hotel room, I'd be away um, six days. So when I got to my hotel room, I could set up an altar and I always set up the sun um, with the uh, sign that it's in. Um, let's see, do I have, I'm trying to think. Here we go. Sorry, I digress. So for example, we have uh, Aries um, sun um, the earth is in um, spring, early spring or spring equinox. And then right now we are in um, the full moon in Libra. So I always put those cards out um, on my altar when I travel and I always bring the living wheel with me um, wherever I go because it helps me feel like I'm, I'm at home. I have my little altar set up so it doesn't matter where I am, I, I feel at home. So that was um, an, another deck that I brought and I always bring. And then the final deck is this one, Oracle of the Roses. So a lovely YouTube um, or Instagram or anyway, online friend of mine um, sent me this um, a couple weeks ago um, because they know that I love roses and it was just my birthday, um, the end of March. And so one day that just showed up in the mail with a, you know, with a lovely note. So I didn't have time to 
do anything but you know do a quick uh look at it before we left so i thought you know what i'll bring that so i am really really proud of myself that i brought five decks with me i think that is really fine and guess what well we haven't been in, been gone a week but i haven't i haven't gotten to this one um and i haven't really used the rider weight smith the uh, albano smith one so um you know it, it it's doable folks <laughs> i guess i should say it's doable liz so here are uh, some of the roses and they have the old-fashioned ones they have the wild ones they have more modern modern garden rose so this is the innovator so it has um what type of rose is it a modern rose a traditional rose or a wild rose and they have um the name so this is called innovator and then, oh, I'm sorry, that's the title. Uh, and then the name of this rose is Who's Your Beauty Rose? So I don't have the um, botanical name, but the common name. This is a modern one, the Hero Sunburst Rose. Here's a Wild Rose, um, Carolina Rose, the Heart. This is an old garden rose. So you can see, I think there's 44 cards in this. It's... Um, by uh, Sherilyn Darcy and Rockpool Publishing. So I'll be spending some, oh, and nice. So anyway, those are my five decks that I brought with me. And um, so far it seems to be plenty. Uh, I'm not feeling like I'm wishing I had more decks with me. And it was really great not being bogged down with 15 tarot decks and guidebooks and I also brought a bunch of um, tarot books with me last time um, but now I am focusing on that court card book and I hope to if not finish it at least make a really good dent into it um, so I'll give you an update and um, we are going to be taking a drive around the um, island uh, in a few days and I thought that I'd probably do a video um, when we go over to um, the other side of the island. So Barbados is um, one of the most Eastern, I actually think it is the most Eastern island in the Caribbean to the point where, so it's West Coast and South Coast are um, surrounded by the Caribbean Sea, but it's East Coast is um, on the Atlantic. And there's a huge difference between that east side and the west side. The east side has that dark blue, um, kind of ferociously um, wavy uh, Atlantic Ocean. And then the south and west side have the turquoise, crystal clear, uh, calmer, sometimes wavy um, Caribbean. So um, I thought I'd do a little video uh, about that. And maybe um, when we journey into one of the rum shacks, I can um, talk to you a little bit more about that. So be well, everyone. Thank you for stopping by. And um, I'd love to hear in the comments about um, decks that you'd bring with you or that you have brought with you when you've gone on vacation. So bright blessings to everyone.